Hi, this is a session on building RAG at scale with Semantic Kernel and Astro Database. My name is Greg Stacknick. I'm a product manager at DataStax. The session, in this session, we're going to follow um, a few different steps. First, we'll define what is retrieval augmented generation or RAG. Um, we'll look at some components that we might use um, to build a RAG application. Uh, we'll look at a couple of real world examples. And then we'll dive into code and look specifically at how we can use Microsoft Semantic Kernel with AstroDB to build a RAG application. Um, but before we get into the demos, um, let's just do a couple of definitions. So first, what is retrieval augmented generation? Well, retrieval augmented generation or RAG is a technique that combines the strengths of large language models with external knowledge sources to improve the accuracy and reliability of text generation. Um, Typically, LLMs are pretty good. They have a large amount of data, um, but they can have limitations, particularly around um, factual accuracy and keeping up to date with current knowledge. Um, so the RAG process improves that, um, and it falls into this kind of, uh, kind of scenario. Uh, we start with the user interaction. Um, when the user interacts with the application, we take their questions and their data, and we call an underlying embedding API that we then use to generate vector data. We use um, that query uh, of the, that incorporates the vector data to perform um, an approximate nearest neighbor search. We then use the combined vector data with the appropriate prompts to send it to an LLM of your choice, which then generates the response for the user. And then to close the loop, we store that generated content and responses back in the underlying database. So three components. We have our data we have, that we then are running through an embedding model to generate vectors. We store that in a vector database, and then we combine the results with a large language model to then produce the system response. So what are the components that we can use to um, uh, work with RAG? Uh, well, DataStax has a real-time AI stack. Um, and one of the components that we will be using um, in this session is AstroDB. So what is AstroDB? Um, it's a cloud database as a service that's built on Apache Cassandra. It supports both structured and unstructured data. So we can store traditional database data as well as our vector data in one place. Um, we'll be using uh, one of our developer APIs to connect to AstroDB, in this case, our JSON API, which can take in um, JSON documents as well as uh, vector data. Uh, we also have other pieces of the stack, including um, streaming support. Uh, we have a development framework called, uh, called RAGStack, um, and it's all built around Kubernetes, um, which is deployed across um, your cloud provider of choice. So let's take a look at a RAG example. In this case, we're going to look at something that we call WikiChat. WikiChat is one of our um, kind of open source uh, learning tools or, or demos that we make available for folks. Um, and so let's first just take a, let's first switch over to a browser where WikiChat is available. So I'm just going to reset set my screen. So Wikipedia is, you know, has a really large um, uh, data set. Um, and if we were to query Wikipedia from an LLM today, we are limited by the last time the LLM was updated. So the Wikipedia data that we're um, querying might be months old, maybe even six months old. Um, so how do we have a RAG application or a generative AI application that is current with um, Wikipedia changes? Well, that's what we've done here. So we're analyzing the top 1,000 pages of Wikipedia. We're listening to the change log. And then when changes come in, we are generating embeddings for those changes and storing them in AstroDB and then building this RAG application. So I'm um, in the UI here, I can type any kind of question I want or any kind of prompt. Um, I'm just going to do a quick refresh. So this will give me the four most recent updates to Wikipedia based on the change log that we're listening to. Um, and then let's just take a look at one of these. Um, so maybe we'll say, uh, what is the historical significance of uh, the Civic Center in Montana? And so that's my prompt. This sends the information, um, it does a retrieval uh, nearest neighbor search um, from AstroDB, and then generates the response using the LLM. Um, and then I also have a reference here. So here I can click on and see um, some details on this Wikipedia page. And if I view the history, 
I can see that this change was just made and we've uh, pulled in the latest data and it, we're using that to drive the application. So um, that's a tip, that's a, you know, kind of a, a typical RAG example. Um, it's actually because of the data volume, um, AstroDB is really well positioned for this um, because it is a distributed database um, that has really low latency, especially around write. Some other popular generative AI use cases um, that we see with uh, users and customers today um, are uh, assistants that will help write code um, using code knowledge from an LLM to help drive um, additional code generation. Uh, well, we see it in things like healthcare with um, where we might be taking unstructured medical records, uh, generating embeddings for that and using that to drive um, additional context in uh, generative AI applications. Uh, we even see it in business intelligence as well, where we might be taking operational data, generating embeddings for that and using that to drive um, analytics. Now, how, if we wanted to build something like a wiki chat, um, we might need to use uh, an orchestration engine. Um, this is the framework that we would use to build that application. Uh, and one of the frameworks we might want to use is Microsoft Semantic Kernel. So what is Semantic Kernel? So Semantic Kernel is an open source SDK that allows developers to easily integrate large language models into their applications. And it achieves RAG through what they call memory management. Um, so there are built-in memory capabilities um, that take embedding information and store it in a vector database. Um, we have recently added uh, support uh, for AstroDB as a memory connector. So if you're building a semantic kernel application and you need to store your embeddings in a vector database, AstroDB configuration is shipped out of the box. Now let's take a look at how we can set that up um, in code. Um, before we get into the code, first we might want to set up our database. So I'm going to quickly log into AstroDB, and um, this is the, the main UI. I can see here in my home, in my landing page, I've got um, some kind of tutorial content that I can use. I can learn about integrations that AstroDB has with various technologies. Um, but really what I want to do right now is set up a database. So I'm going to go into my database tab and create a new database. Um, and so I'm going to say I want a, a vector database because I'm going to be storing vector data in this database. I'll give it a name. And then I'll choose my provider. And in this case, I'm going to use uh, Microsoft Azure. And so I'll say create database. And then we will go off and create this database in the Azure region that I selected. Um, now, provisioning a database is pretty quick. Um, could take up to maybe two minutes, but just to keep things fast, I'm going to switch over to another database and use that for my application. Um, and so now that I'm in the database view, I get some basic metrics about my database. Um, I have a way to explore my data, um, but what I'm really interested in right now is my connection details. So from my application, I'm going to want to generate a token. And this is what I will use along with my database ID to um, configure semantic kernel to know how to talk to AstroDB and store embeddings in the database. Um, so I'll just click this generate token button, um, capture this secret, and then store it in my um, environment variables file. Okay, so I've got the basic database set up. I've got my token, I've got my database ID. Um, now I'm going to go into the code and actually test this out. So I've got a simple, um, Collab Notebook. Um, this is part of a uh, blog that we most that we recently produced um, around getting started with Semantic Kernel and AstroDB. Um, and so the first step I'm going to do is install my libraries. Uh, and so I'll, so let's run this. And so this is going to install um, the Semantic Kernel package into my environment. While this is running, um, we'll import a handful of different modules from Semantic Kernel. Um, the one that we're probably most interested in is this one right here. And that is we're going to pull in the AstroDB memory connector from um, the semantic kernel memory store. Uh, then I can load some environment variables. Um, this includes things like my database ID, my token, oh, the region, the name of the collection I'm using, and other things. And now let's, um, in this block, let's 
initialize semantic kernel. So here we will set this up. We'll set up our um, chat service and embedding service, and we get a response here that these completed properly. So that's good. Okay, so now we want to, now that we've got our chat service and our embedding service set up, we want to can actually configure AstroDB to be the memory module for this semantic kernel example. And so what we're going to do is first we're going to create a store where we will create an AstroDB store pulling in this information from our database. These are all, I've defined all these as environment variables. Um, and then we will create our text memory, passing in our store, and then set up our memory plugin. So let's run this. And so we get a response showing that everything um, came back okay, which is great. Um, now let's set up our prompt. So here we'll set up a, a basic prompt um, where we're gonna answer some questions. Um, we'll set up our execution settings. We'll create our prompt template. Um, and then we will um, add our prompt. So let's set that up. All right, that looks great. Um, and now we want to um, upload a data set. So this will be um, our data set of information that we will then pass to an embedding model, generate the vectors, and then write it to AstroDB. Okay, so that looks like that worked great. And so last but not least, um, let's actually execute the rag flow. So here we'll actually actually execute. So we'll upload our file, we'll um, generate our prompt, and we'll get a response. So our prompt is what is AstroDB, or what is Astro Vector Database? Uh, and we got a response. It's a NoSQL vector database for generative AI that's powered by Apache Cassandra. So those are the basics. The important things to remember when working with semantic kernel and AstroDB is um, importing the appropriate libraries, um, configuring the memory store, um, and that's about it really. It's really just uh, three lines of code. Now, let's go back to our slides. So again, what did we look at? We looked at how we can use semantic kernel along with AstroDB with its um, memory store uh, plugin um, to generate a, a simple RAG application. And we looked at the configuration um, details that we need to be aware of in order to set this up. Um, so um, to learn more about what we've talked about today, um, you can sign up for Astra at astra.datastacks.com. Um, we also have um, a blog that gets started with Semantic Kernel as well as documentation. Um, so you can get into the code um, more, in more detail, the code that I showed in this notebook, um, as well as other coding examples. Um, so thanks again for joining and um, let us know what you if you need more help.